All right, Sky says, happy 52, my IFTTT 2.0 blog said very low page authority. What is the easiest way to boost this? Do you include terms of service privacy pages on these blogs, excuse me, blogs, or and do you use paid images? Okay, um, I do not include terms of service and privacy pages on Web 2.0 blogs. Uh, personally, I don't. It's just additional work that I think is completely unnecessary. Um, as far as boosting page authority, there's a lot of stuff that we do with, you know, we use PBNs, uh, GSA, FCS Networker, we you know uh, recommend that you use something like FCS Networker or Sendwire as a first tier link to your IFTTT networks, and then you can use GSA to power those links up so that you're not hitting your your tier one IFTTT ring directly with spam, um, at least not GSA type spam. But pretty much anything that you can build links to those networks with, um, preferably links that have some juice already, uh, you can increase page authority. That's not the most important metric. It does help, but it's not the most important metric. Um, you want to try to build relevant links to those networks because that's going to increase topical trust flow, which is more important, in my opinion, than page authority. However, strictly for boosting page authority, uh, again, we can you can spam it. You can do PBN links. You can use SAPE links, uh, a number of things. Hernan, you want to add to that? Yeah, in fact, we have developed the um, link building service for AFTTT networks thinking on how to make them more powerful and they have been working great because we've been using a combination of FCS and GSA but it doesn't have to be FCS you just have to have a layer of contextuals pointing to those IFTTT networks that is what we have found that works the best and you can achieve that with GSA only you can achieve that with uh, RankWiz or any other service there or uh, yeah your own your own web 2.0 networks but the, ma the main idea here is that you, you, you put a layer of contextuals because we have discovered that they pass more juice that way. Yeah. Uh, so as, as Bradley was saying, so as not to spam them. Even further, if you're talking about a, a branded network, which should be considered part of your website as well. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we've actually are testing a another Web 2.0 posting service right now that we can use as, instead of just FCS which is pretty cool. I uh, can't really talk about it other than uh, it posts to a lot of different Web 2.0 sites that aren't typically used in most Web 2.0 posting apps. So it will give us some more variety in our in our uh, Web 2 links, which is going to be kind of cool. Um, we're testing it right now, but hopefully within the next maybe two weeks, if it works out as well as we in plan on it working out, uh, we'll be using that as an add-on service for the link building packages. So we'll keep you guys posted. Daniel says, uh, or do I use paid images? No, not for Web 2.0 blogs. Um, for money sites, yeah, oftentimes I will. I'll purchase images from like stock photo places because I'm worried about it causing issues. Um, if I'm using somebody else's image, I'll try to attribute to their where the image source came from. But even then, you have to be careful uh, because sometimes attributing, a, you know, citing the source of the image is not enough. And you can still get into trouble for that. So, but for Web 2.0 sites, no, absolutely not. I don't do that. And if you're using paid images on your money site and you're syndicating your blog posts, you're going to have licenses for the, those, those images anyways. So you're actually just syndicating the image that you have a license for. Don't use Getty images no matter what unless yeah. you pay for them. Yeah, because they will hunt you down and fine you. <laughs> so. And beat you up and take your lunch money. Yep, basically.